Hi, I'm in Paramaribo, Suriname, which, if you didn't know, is the smallest country in South America. It's located on the northern Atlantic coast. Across the continent, on the Pacific side, is Lima, Peru, where a sketchy incident recently occurred involving a fire truck and a departing Latham Airbus A320neo. Two firefighters were killed and one was injured when the fire truck entered the runway during the takeoff roll of the Latham Flight 2213. Initial news reports stated that the firefighting crew was responding to an unrelated incident on another part of the airfield, but that was quickly modified by Peruvian officials who clarified that the truck was actually taking part in a disaster response exercise. Now these exercises aren't that uncommon. And in fact, if you go back to the Sioux Falls accident of United Flight 232, which occurred in 1989, you'll find an example of when this type of training actually saved lives. The captain of that flight, Al Haynes, got a lot of credit for the 184 out of 296 occupants aboard United 232 who ultimately survived. The aircraft, a DC-10, experienced an engine failure that resulted in the loss of all hydraulic power. If you don't know, the DC-10 is a big aircraft. It's over 300,000 pounds. It has big control surfaces that battle hurricane forces in order to keep the aircraft aloft. The only way to move those surfaces is to pump 3,000 pounds per square inch of hydraulic fluid into a dozen different actuators. The loss of hydraulics greatly diminishes the ability to control a large aircraft like a DC-10. I'm not going to go into details on that particular crash now, the United 232 crash. Others have already covered it. But I always found it notable for the Czech airman who was sitting in first class and who was tapped by Captain Haynes to help out during the emergency. That Czech airman's name is Denny Fitch, and he has one of the most memorable quotes related to this particular accident. Years later in a documentary, he commented that, the first thing that strikes your mind is, I'm gonna die this afternoon. The only question that remains is, how long is it gonna take for Iowa to hit me? If you've ever seen video of the United Airlines DC-10 crash in Sioux Falls, it is gnarly. It does not look like the sort of crash that two thirds of the occupants would be able to survive. That number was as high as it was for three different reasons. Great airmanship by a crew facing an unprecedented mechanical failure. Number two, the fact that hundreds of Iowa National Guardsmen just so happened to be at the airport to assist in the immediate aftermath of the accident. And finally, the fact that large disaster training exercise had been completed by the city of Sioux Falls a couple years prior to this incident. Those involved have stated that this training greatly reduced the amount of chaos experienced while attempting to rescue, treat, and transport hundreds of people who had all at once experienced a major traumatic event in a very specific location. Now you know that you're in the modern era when the crash in Lima goes viral due to a tweet by a couple who were aboard late in flight 2213. These two took the time to commemorate the crash by snapping a selfie on the tarmac with the Latham wreckage in the background. So eat your heart out, Elon. The cause of the Latham crash is pretty basic. The firefighting truck entered an active runway without permission while the airliner was taking off. The Airbus had been cleared by air traffic controllers for departure when they suddenly encountered the fire truck entering the runway. You can actually see in the airport surveillance video that the fire truck attempted a last minute swerve in order to avoid the Airbus, but it was obviously too late. Now I currently fly the Airbus A320 series, the aircraft that was involved in this accident. In our case, that encompasses the 319, the 320, and 321, which are part of all of a common aircraft fleet. I'm an airline pilot with a background as a Czech airman who is an instructor and evaluator for other airline pilots. I also write flight safety articles for Twin and Turbine Magazine as well as Redbird Flight Simulators. As it happens, I have just finished a cover story related to ground safety. It was assigned to me by my editor at Twin and Turbine Magazine. Now, as you can see in this video, the aircraft was in the high speed regime of the takeoff roll just prior to the collision. A 150,000 pound machine at 100 plus knots is not surprisingly not very maneuverable and it takes a load of time to stop one. Obviously a vehicle or aircraft on the runway is a good reason for pilots to reject the takeoff but at 100 knots things can happen pretty fast. On top of that it's not unusual for many aircraft and many vehicles at large airports to be holding short of the active runway. I've actually developed the habit of scanning the entire runway environment prior to takeoff and landing with a focus on intersecting taxiways and runways. 
I got into this habit due to a fatal crash that occurred at Quincy Municipal Airport in Illinois. This was almost exactly 26 years prior to the Latham crash that just recently occurred. I go into some detail on that crash in the upcoming cover story for Twin and Turbine Magazine. It's going to be published next month if you want to look at it. It's January of 2023, depending upon when you watch this video. You should be able to find that online. The reason I was really familiar with the accident at Quincy was that it occurred at one of the first airlines that I worked for. It involved a Beechcraft 1900C and a King Air A90. The pilot of the King Air was a retired TWA pilot who had also reached the rank of Colonel in the U.S. Air Force. He had a ton of flight experience, but ultimately was the one who caused the collision between these two aircraft. He attempted to take off while the 1900 was on short final from an intersecting runway. The 1900 was landing runway 13 while the King Air was taking off from runway 4. Now Quincy Airport does not have a tower controller, so all communications were via the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, CTAF for short. Pilots are required to self-report on CTAF their position and their intention. The 1900 crew approaching runway 13 made the proper radio calls prior to landing, while the King Air pilot taking off from runway 4 did not. Unfortunately, they wound up meeting in the middle. Now, the crash forces were ultimately survivable. However, the smoke inhalation and fire that resulted was not. I'm going to do a video in the future that focuses on this crash. It's actually pretty sad. It, it kind of represents the opposite of United 232. In the United case, first responders, medical personnel, disaster training, and pilot performance saved an awful lot of lives. But those mechanisms just weren't as available in Quincy in 1996. A lot of people wound up dying who could have otherwise been saved. Fortunately, in the case of Latham at Lima, no one aboard the aircraft perished. Unfortunately, again, two firefighters did. Obviously, thoughts and prayers for their family. Well, that's it for this time. Farewell from Paramaribo, Suriname. Don't forget to like and follow. Be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.